So I've mentioned a few times that I don't really like Oh My ZSH and today I'm going to actually do a video on why that's the case and I'm also going to show you some things like how to run all of your Oh My ZSH plugins and all your Oh My ZSH themes without even touching Oh My ZSH. And one thing I do want to get out of the way is that if you do really like Oh My ZSH, I'm not saying don't run it. If you want to run it, it's your system, you can run whatever you want on it. But I want to make an argument for why you don't really need to and then also if you do still want a plugin manager, I'm going to provide some suggestions for things you should run instead. So if you're new to the channel, you know what to do and let's jump right into it. So, the first thing I want to go over is like what Oh My ZSH is in case you're not really sure. So basically what it is, it's a plugin manager slash configuration framework and basically what it claims to do is provides a way to, I guess, easily install plugins and easily install themes. So my main problem with Oh My ZSH is that it doesn't actually make anything easier. If anything, it makes it a little bit harder and it kind of abstracts away what you're doing, even though what you're doing is incredibly simple. So one of the first things you might say is something like, oh, how would I install a plugin without Oh My ZSH? So let's take any of these for example. So let's say we have this Git plugin. Let's actually go to the list of plugins and let's actually have a look at what the plugins actually are. So I don't know, let's just pick a random one. The Git one works for example. So we'll jump down to that one. Okay, this will work. I don't want to search for it. So this complete one. So let's see what this complete is. And let's actually, I will find that Git one just, just to be fair. Okay, so here's the Git one as well. Okay, so complete, if we have a look at this, we'll notice something. I don't know if you can see it properly, but that is a .zsh file. And if you don't know what a .zsh file is, that is a ZSH script. So let's bring this open, have a look at this. So we'll see in here, this, this is just a ZSH script. Okay, well that's, that's cool. What about this Git one? So we look at this and that's also a ZSH script. Okay, so that's that's interesting. So what is it actually doing when you're doing something like, where is the Oh My ZSH thing? Okay, so to actually load up plugins within Oh My ZSH, you put them in this list like this. That's cool and all, but how would you do it without running Oh My ZSH, for example? So let's say, for example, we have this complete.plugin.zsh actually downloaded. So what we would do, we come into our actual zsh file. So I'll just kill that compositor. So .zshrc, and we'll come over here, and all we have to do is write source, and then the name of the actual plugin, or the path to the plugin. So let's just assume we had it in our home directory. So we could do something like this. So complete dot plugin dot zsh and that achieves the exact same job you've now just loaded in that plugin and there was actually no reason to use oh my zsh for that so before we get on to the next point i wanted to briefly talk about what i actually do on my system so if we just have a look at my zshrc again so you may have noticed that i'm not actually sourcing any of those plugins like that so what i actually do and this is another problem I have with Oh My ZSH. It's a weird environment that's been built around this plugin manager. So a lot of the plugins in here aren't really plugins. They're actually just a bundle of aliases. So let's take this Git one, for example. So if we just have a look at what this does. So what that basically is, is just a list of ZSH aliases. So if we just look in, this is a couple of stuff. Like this stuff, that's kind of interesting, but that's also really just, a, it's an alias effectively, but the rest of these are all aliases. So for stuff like that, I might as well just put them in my own alias file. There's no reason to actually use this plugin for that. There are a couple of plugins that I do run, but for most of the ones that are aliases, I'll usually look at the aliases and be like, okay, which of the aliases do I use? Which don't I care about? Like say for example, Cherry pick. I very rarely use cherry pick. I guess I could have an alias for it, but I'm gonna forget it by the time I next go to use it. So I don't really think there's any reason for me to include that. Whereas for other plugins like say, a plugin that I actually do really think is useful is this ZSH syntax highlighting. So all I'm doing with that one is actually sourcing it. So for the ones like that, which are actually proper plugins, like 
ZSH syntax highlighting, ZSH you should use, and command not found. All of those I actually do source, but for everything else that's mainly just a bunch of aliases, for those ones, I don't even bother actually installing the plugin like this. I will just copy them into my own alias file, and I would recommend you doing the same, just so you have a, I guess, a better grasp of all your aliases, and it's much easier to edit them if they're all in one place. Okay, so what about something else that OMIZSH does? So, we have also under customization, so we did adding a new plugin, so you can add new plugins like that. You can even put them on one line by putting a semicolon between them. So yeah, it's slightly shorter syntax, you don't have to write source, but you don't need OMIZSH to do this. So what about something else? So overriding an existing plugin. All you have to do for that is just source something a bit later in the document. So let's say we have this complete dot uh, plugin thing here. So let's say we have another one that's like this. And in this script, we also have functions that actually override the functions that are in the first one you've just achieved the exact same thing. There was no reason to use OMIZSH to do that. Okay, so what about something else then? Partially overriding, the exact same thing. So in this one, you can override every single function you have in it. This second one, you can override some of the functions. And there's really no reason for this to even be here. I don't really know why OMIZSH has to come with all of these built-in plugins. I guess if you really want something that's pre-built, there's one reason to use OMIZSH. If you really can't be bothered to go through the minimal amount of effort to go and get a good looking version of ZSH, I guess that's fine. But you could also go and just download someone else's ZSHRC file and achieve the exact same thing without having to run OMIZSH. Okay, so here's another one that you might be, I guess, not sure about. So what about themes? Because these are a different one. These are a .zsh-theme, and I wasn't sure about these myself. But let's actually have a look at one of these themes. So this is a theme by the name of Agnosta. So you can go directly to the repo here. I might leave a link to this in the description down below. And let's just have a look at this. So we've got a couple of things in here. Most of this stuff is just for the Git repo. So this stuff right here is for the Git repo. And same with this one, same with the readme as well. The only one we really care about is this agnosta.zsh-theme. So you might think that maybe, maybe this is special. Maybe we actually need OMIZSH for this. So let's have a look in here. And we'll notice, look at this. It's just another ZSH script. So what would happen if we actually sourced this, for example? Let's just disable my actual prompt right now, just so there's not any, I guess, clashes with it. So I'm running Spaceship right now in case you care at all, but we'll do that. Okay, so I downloaded this one earlier. So it'll be in Agnosta, I believe. Yeah, cool. So if we, Look at this, we've got this agnosta.zsh-theme. So if I just write out what I did before, so you can actually write this out in your terminal or in your actual zshrc file, there's no difference between doing the two. But let's just go source agnosta.zsh and what we'll see is our terminal will look exactly like this as soon as I run this. So there was no reason to run OMIZSH for that either. So one thing I guess you can say that OMIZSH does do is it'll let you actually randomize your theme. So if you really need to randomize your theme and you can't be bothered to write, a, I can th think it would be a three line shell script, maybe a one line shell script to just select a random number and then load up a file based on that random number or just select a random file within a folder. I guess you could use OMIZSH for this, but as I said, it's a very, very simple script to write yourself, and I guarantee someone has written a random file selector script already, so you might as well just use that instead. So what else do we have in here? So we've got this thing about overriding internals. So you can do this with regular ZSH as well. So as I said before, where you have this partially overriding a plugin, all you need to do is then source a separate file that will then define the exact same function and you've just achieved the exact same task. So there's no reason to actually use OMIZSH for that either. So you can set up a custom directory with base ZSH. There's no reason why you can't do that. And the one thing that you might care about is actually version control of your plugins. Now we'll get to that in just a moment, but there is one other thing I did want to mention before that. So you might say, but what if I want to run just the basic OMIZSH? I want to have all the plugins that come with it by default. I don't really care about having anything else. 
You also don't need OhmyZSH for that either because there's actually a list of all the plugins that it has and you can just install these yourself through the method that I mentioned earlier. So you don't need it for that either really. So every single one of these plugins, we can just pick a, a random one here. I haven't looked at Laravel, for, for example, and we'll see that it's just a ZSH script and you don't need oh my ZSH to actually run it. You can use regular sourcing or as I've said, there are plugin managers and if you do want to use a plugin manager, there are some ones that are actually just plugin managers and don't have all this extra stuff that a plugin manager really has no right to be touching. Say for example, something like Zplug. So Zplug, I had a brief look through it and it looks fairly similar to something like a Vimplug, which is what I use as my Vim plugin manager. So all it does is it'll do things like loading up plugins, you can lazy load plugins, you can pull directly from a Git repo, you can update from a Git repo, you can do caching, a bunch of other stuff like that. And Antigen is also another option for that. It does basically most of the same stuff. I don't know which one's better, but you could use either and they're both just basic plugin managers and that's really all you need as a plugin manager. So I'm not running any of these because I don't really care about any of the sort of I guess lazy loading stuff or any of those extra stuff. And most of my plugins I've written myself. So I have no reason to be pulling updates from a Git repo. But even if you do want to pull from a Git repo, you don't actually need a plugin manager for that. All you need to do for that is have the Git repo somewhere on your system. And then every time you want to update, just pull down those repos. And I can see how that would be a little less convenient. So because of that, I wouldn't say completely avoid using a plugin manager. All I would say is you don't need something as bloated as oh my ZSH just to be a plugin manager. You can use Zplug, you can use Antigen, you can use any of the other little ones and you can get all of the exact same features because all oh my ZSH is doing is sourcing files, it's doing a little bit of lazy loading, it's doing some updating and it's got all of these built-in internals that you really don't need because half of them you're not gonna run I think that's the worst part about Omo ZSH. I wouldn't have any problem if it was just a plugin manager. But the problem I have with it is it comes with all of these built-in internals that half of them you don't care about. So because you don't care about half of them, why don't you just not install half of the plugins? But if you run Omo ZSH, you don't have that option. You've got all these internals there. You can override them, obviously. But you've got them there anyway. You don't need them on your system if you're not going to be running them. I don't like to use the term bloated lightly, but in the case where all you're doing is installing a bunch of plugins that you're not actually running, I think it's fair to say that we can call oh my ZSH bloated. If you use every single one of the plugins, that's fine. Then I guess it's not bloated for you, but most people I don't think are really going to care. So I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to actually talk about in this video. I've gone over themes, I've gone over plugins, I've gone over actually overriding certain parts and I've gone over plugin managers. So I think that's everything I want to actually go over in this video. So if you like this video, remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think. Maybe you completely disagree with me. Maybe you agree with every single word I said. And as I mentioned at the start of the video, if you love oh my CSH, this video isn't to say that you can't run it. If you want to run it on your system, that's entirely up to you. You can run whatever you want. My entire point was that here's why you shouldn't run it and that's basically it. So if you want to keep running it, go right ahead. So if you want to see more videos like this, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm now aiming for 10,000 subs and any help be really appreciated. Up on that corner, I've got the playlist this video's in. So go check that out if you want to see other videos like this. Down below, I've got all of my social links. So if you want to chat with me on like Discord, anything like that, then go check those out. I've also got my support link, so if you'd like to support the channel, go down there. I've got a Patreon, a couple other methods, so feel free to use any of those if you do want to support the channel. But obviously, if you don't feel like doing it, then you don't have to. And lastly, I've got all of my alternate video platforms. So I've got my library and I've got my BitTube. So feel free to check any of those out if you want to see my videos on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out. <laughs>